This is the Lord of glory who did not have to leave the splendor of heaven, who did not have to leave the glories of heaven. Jesus did not have to lie aside, lay aside the robe of his glory and splendor. Jesus did not have to come to earth, but he came from heaven so that he may pay with his blood for my redemption. So he paid the penalty of my sin and yours. Perhaps more than any other in this series, today I'm sharing my heart with you, my own life. Because imagination and visualization represents me more than anything else, and I just need to tell you that up front. So when I read the Word of God, when I read the Scripture, I often begin to visualize this, how the creator of the universe went through that crucifixion week when I begin to visualize that, literally, my mind, it just cannot handle it. And I, but I do try to imagine what it was like, especially that I've been there many times now, and I, I, I've seen the sights, I've walked the streets, and I've, I, I've seen the places. I think of the day before the crucifixion, of how our Savior must have felt how deeply, in every level, he must have anguished at the abandonment of his friends. How must have felt when one of them sold him for the price of a slave? How one denied him and they all forsook him I visualize the deep pain that our Lord must have experienced when his chief disciple promised never, never, even if they all leave him, he will never leave him. And then three times he denied any knowledge of him. I visualize that pain. How as fully God, he knew that they will all forsake him, but as fully man, how that pained him. How the one through whom and for whom all the universe came into existence and yet they slapped his holy face. How he must have felt the giver of every breath that we draw, they spat on him. I visualize what it's like during that sleepless night in Caiaphas' basement. It's really more of a dungeon, it's on the hall and the wall of the ceiling. I've been there many times. And there you're going to find Psalm 22, which supposedly our Lord re recited all night, and it's in more than 20 languages. Psalm 22. In that, in that, I, I read it the first time I went to many years ago, but I've never been able to do it again. I always had somebody else to read it. But that was just the beginning. I visualize how he walked two and a half miles to and from trial sites. And then I remember that he did this for me. I tried to visualize what was like even before that in the Garden of Gethsemane 
where he was sweating, not sweat, but blood coming out of his pores. Something that I've learned later that it's a phenomena that's so rare that it only happens during some of the most excruciating stress. And he did this for me and for my sin. Then my biggest imagination races to that dreadful time before the crucifixion when he was being flogged, which is really the Roman method of exhausting their victim before the crucifixion. In fact, under Roman law, only women and senators not allowed to be whipped like this. Then I try to visualize these short whips with straps, leather straps. And at the tip of each one of those straps, there is a sheep bone designed to tear into the skin. Most likely he received 39 of those because by law they wouldn't go to 40 because the 40th one's supposed to kill you. And he did this for me. The Romans generally stripped the victims of their clothes and they tied their hands above their head on an upright post. The back of the buttocks and the legs get whipped first. And he bore all of this for me. As the flogging would continue, these little sheep bones at the end of the straps would tear deep into the skin until the underlying skeletal muscles begin to tear. And he did this for my sin. Then came the crucifixion itself. An upright wooden post, about 200 pounds, is fixed to the ground. And the horizontal crossbar that would weigh about 100 pounds It was customary those days that the condemned man would carry the crossbar because the post is already in the ground and location. Please listen to me. The creator of all the trees in the woods carried that crossbar. from the flogging post to the location of the crucifixion. He carried that 100 pound crossbar and he did this for my sin. And then I'd imagine the lack of food and water and sleep for a long period of time and carrying that 100 pound crossbar for one third of a mile. And he did this for me. At the site of the execution, by law, the victim was given bitter drink as a mild sedative. And then he was thrown on his back on the dirt in preparation for nailing his hand to that crossbar. And I think of the wounds from the scourging mixed with the dirt contaminating his wounds. And he did this for me. And with an arms outstretched, the nails, the wrists were nailed with spikes or about six to seven inches. And the reason they hammered 
the wrists, not the palms, because the palm would tear very quickly and would fall from the cross. And he hung in there for a while because they nailed the wrists. After both wrists were fastened to the spikes to the crossbar, then that crossbar is lifted with the victim on it on the steps. Then the feet were usually nailed directly to the front post. And he did all of this for me. Now, beloved, don't ever forget, this is the Lord of glory. This is the Lord of glory who did not have to leave the splendor of heaven, who did not have to leave the glories of heaven, Jesus did not have to lie aside, lay aside the robe of his glory and splendor. Jesus did not have to come to earth, but he came from heaven so that he might pay with his blood for my redemption. So he paid the penalty of my sin and yours. Someone will say, but Michael, then a lot of people tortured and suffered and died, and even before and after. Jesus, even today, there are people who are suffering torture all over the world. Yes, 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 yes. But most of them, if not all of them, don't have a choice. But he did. He did. Furthermore, none of them were sinless. None of them are sinless. None of them were the son of the living God who eternally coexisted with the Father before all worlds. Uh, but Jesus is the one through whom and for whom all things were created. He had a choice. He chose to pay for my sin and yours. He didn't have to pay for his, he had no sin. He was not paying for his sin. In the Gospel of John, Jesus said, I have authority to lay it down. I have authority to take it up and I choose to lay it down for you. Beloved, let me tell you, if you want to grow in your love for Jesus, and this is a series we've been going through now, this is the fifth and next week we'll Talk about how you grow in your love for Jesus with your memory. If you truly want to grow in your love for Jesus, you cannot escape the imagery of the cross. Visualizing the cross can only deepen your love for the one who gave his all for you and me. And there may be someone still say, well, Michael, isn't meditation, imagination, visualization dangerous? Don't the Buddhists and other groups of people meditate and visualize and therefore Christians should avoid that? No, not at all. Buddhists and others meditate on emptying their minds of any thoughts, any distracting thoughts, and then focus their attention on whatever comes to their mind. <laughs> I say no and a million no to that kind of meditation, no. And that is why Christian meditation, imagination, visualization is all about Christ. It's all about Christ filling our minds. It's all about emptying ourselves of self-worship and filling our minds with the one who gave his all for us. It's all about filling our minds with that indescribable and inexplicable love of God. It's filling our minds with that matchless love of Jesus for us. And after you fill your mind with his matchless, indescribable love, then ask yourself the following questions. Do I love him back? 
anywhere near his love for me. Do I love him back with my all? Do I love him back sacrificially? Do I love him back unconditionally? Do I love him back with my possessions? Do I love him back with my energy? Do I love him back with my time? Do I love him back with my emotions? Do I love him back with my passion? Do I love him back with my imagination? 